Our next speaker is going to be Honorable N.F. Shibambu. Now, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson of the National Council of Provinces. I had not anticipated that the speaker who spoke here is going to sing as well because we're going to deal with the, the others who came here to sing for supper. Allow me, Commander-in-Chief, uh, to once again avoid responding to the childish and mostly paltry, trivial and insignificant inputs that came from members of the ruling party. We are going to utilize this opportunity to take a nuanced approach and speak much more decisively to what is to be done in, in relation to the electricity crisis confronting society. Many of the speakers that came here never presented anything much more tangible and believable as to what is to be done. One of the careerist members of parliament who spoke last yesterday even sang a children's kindergarten song seeking for a job from his president. What is that lyrics again, Commissioner We saying, here, here, who? Mr. Ramadola give us a job, here, here, who? I think that uh, as part of the whippery, we must also hire a jumping castle so that after singing that song, they must go and jump there. They will be joined by this one who just sang again here. And this person who just left here now is presiding over the State Information Technology Agency, which is failing to synchronize all the technological platforms that the state has, police stations, healthcare facilities, and the entire system operate in separation. But we've got a CETA that cannot provide a singular synchronized system. She's presiding over a South African post office which is going to retrench 6,000 workers in the immediate. And she is waxing really clear yeah, about things that are not there. She's presiding over ICASA, which is failing to deal decisively with the monopoly of uh, the multi-choice domination that has been operating almost alone without accountability in the broadcast industry. I said, President and Commander-in-Chief, that the, the approach today will be nuanced. So I'm going to speak first to the solutions as to what is to be done in relation to electricity. And then I will conclude with the diagnosis. So we'll take it the other way around so that we can then be able to move forward. But first, let us make reference to the founding manifesto of the Economic Freedom Fighters, which was adopted 10 years ago in Soweto when this mighty movement was founded. On energy, the EFL founding manifesto says, Stabilization of energy sources, in particular the supply of electricity, is important for an economic development strategy that will include the development of more industries. Whilst the South African state should intensify the efforts currently in place for sustainable, consistent energy provisions, another, other energy means and other forms of generations should be explored. And this includes further research on how energy derived out of uranium can be safely transferred into sustainable, environmentally friendly electricity for industrial development, public purpose, and for use by household. We, are, we said in 10 years ago that let us explore the usage of uranium as a source of energy. We even said that the principle on energy is that the green energy sources should be pursued and that the state should heavily invest in the green energy corporations which will explore manufacturing and install green energy alternatives in the whole of South Africa. When we spoke about green energy sources, we spoke it in the context that it should be the state, not independent power producers. That must be at the center of rollout of a renewable energy. Now, I'm going to talk to the solutions as what is to be done. Number one is that we must stop this illusion that South Africa is going to immediately discontinue the usage of coal as base load energy sources because that is the only way we can sustain our electricity. In that annual pilgrimage that you go to in Davos, in the World Economic Forum, one of the vice premiers of uh, the People's Republic of China, Liu He, 
who is the director of the Central Financial and Economic Affairs, responded when he was asked about what is the PRC going to do about carbon neutrality. He said that China is going to increase its investment in carbon capture and storage. And this is against the fact that China consumes possibly 20, if not 40 times of energy more than South Africa. The energy sources that come from coal in China, Minister, Mr. Matanshi, is, 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 is 1 million megawatts. ESCOM in its entirety is not even at 50,000 megawatts currently. And then the, 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 the leader of the PPRC says that we're going to invest in carbon capture and storage. But when South Africa was in the United Nations Climate Change Conferences in Glasgow and in, Shal, uh, in Sham El Sheikh in Egypt in both uh, 2021 and 2022, we kept on committing there that we're going to close off our power stations ahead of schedule. We even accepted this 8.5 billion US dollars which was promised by the West as a way of diverting us from what otherwise should be our base load in terms of energy supply. The president of the ANC even ridiculed the Minister of Energy when he said that the West is trying to bully South Africa on the African continent into abandoning coal. He said, no, this one is just a mine worker. He does not know anything. We're in a crisis now in terms of what has happened under all of those issues. Now, that illusion must be dealt with. We have to now invest in clean coal technologies, working with the CSSR and the Council of Geosciences. Number two, we need to plug into the national grid the floating storage regasification units. The Secretary General of the ANC will not know what that is because in the schooling system before tertiary, they don't teach that. So the FSRUs, when Germany was faced with the energy crisis, out of the necessary military operations that are happening in Ukraine now, they approved within 12 months the power ships. So power ships is like a, a power stations that come from the sea, and then it parks on the shores and plugs into the national grid. Here in South Africa, through the Risk Mitigation, mitigation Independent Power Producers Procurement Program, South Africa approved the car power ship from Turkey to plug in 1,220 megawatts of electricity. Again, Secretary General of the ANC, 1,200 megawatts can electrify the entirety of the Northern Cape, even the entirety of the Eastern Cape on its own. But due to those who are seeking bribes, those who are trying to export the people who are awarded that bid, the car power ships cannot be plugged into the grid to now ameliorate the energy crisis that we have. The reality is that in the immediate, you have got no any other solution except plugging in the FSRUs from Turkey, from China, and from the Russian Federation. That is one of the immediate things that we must have to deal with. And then number three, we need to approve the proposal by Rosatom, the Rosatom Nuclear Power uh, Station and Energy Company, which currently provides more than 20% of electricity in the Russian Federation. It employs more than 250,000 people. It has been here in South Africa saying that, why don't you give us a power purchase agreement like you are giving to your friends from the West and build up to 6,000 megawatts of nuclear energy which everyone else allows and agrees that is part of clean energy sources. That is one of the things that have to be done in the immediate. But also we must not surrender the state capacity to invest directly in renewable energy. We must do what the fighters said, the ground forces said in Uncle Tom's Hall in July 2013. We said that the state must play a central role in renewable energy. That is what the founding manifesto of this 10-year organization said must be done. Part of the immediate things that you have to deal with is to cut off the aluminum smelters because they consume upward of 800, 800 megawatts, which can then lessen the pressure on the grid in terms of uh, what should happen. Let us collaborate with Mozambique to complete the Kabura Baza hydroelectric power station so that we can continue. The so these are some of the issues. We have to talk about this because 
we know that you're going to be out of power we are going to take power as the EFF we do not want to take power under darkness the question is why are all of these things not being pursued it's because fragrantly the president of the ANC defies his less than two months resolution of shifting has come from public enterprises to energy and the purpose he says here that the, the the reason is because the minister of public enterprises must continue to restructure escom what is that restructuring is the mutilation of escom into three different components so like escom is supposed to be one board but it's being mutilated now into three different companies and he makes a false claim that such is consistent with the global practice that is not the, the truth. The biggest power utility in the world is in China. It, it, it generates more than 4,000 gigawatts. It has got more than 900,000 kilometers of transmission lines. It's involved in distribution of electricity. The Rosa Thomas spoke about in China, in the, in the Russian Federation, is involved and it's one company that is involved in the entire value chain of electricity uh, uh, the, the, the distribution. In Germany, Unipa, Unipa goes to the extent of even involved in mining the entire value chain, one company. But you want to mutilate ESCOM. And what is the purpose of the mutilation of ESCOM? They want to allow the municipalities and a div different division to distribute and be the ones that are at the cold face of facing with rate payers of electricity. And then have us come with the 48,000 kilometers of transmission lines, which must necessarily be forced to buy electricity from independent power producers. The deputy president, the former deputy president of the Republic, once said that ESCOM is not going to privatize. It is privatized. So the, the, the entire crisis of South Africa is this need to want to privatize ESCOM particularly power generation that let us have transmission there and then we call our friends to come and be the ones that plug energy into the transmission line that is at the center of south africa's problem a capitalist driven greedy project that seeks to undermine everything else there if you want to attach the profit motive into the energy provision public good provision you are definitely going to have a solution Electricity is a public good. It must be provided by all of us. Now, President, I'm going to close. You know, one of the, one of the biographers of Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa, Anthony Butler, says that when he bought his first car, he was known for driving that particular car, a BMW, in reserve gear for hundreds of meters. So a person drives a car in reserve gear for hundreds of meters. It's recorded. It is apparent and very evident now that what Mr. Ramaphosa did to his car is, down, is doing to South Africa today. He is taking our country in reserve, reserve gear. Everything else that we thought we had made progress on is going backward. We thought that we're not going to have the crisis of electricity. We have got crisis of electricity now. Whoever thought we're going to have water shedding? We've got a problem of water now. Whoever thought that we're going to be in a situation that more and more people, even when the, the population is growing, more and more people are going to lose their jobs. The levels of unemployment, more than 12 million people are unemployed because of this man. He is taking this country in a reverse gear the same way he did when he was utilizing his first car. The public infrastructure is collapsing. The hospitals are collapsing. The schooling systems, despite the claims that you make here, are not, it's not working appropriately. How do you explain that you have got close to a million children who write their exams at the senior secondary level? But you only have got 160,000 spaces available to take them at post-secondary level. What nonsense is that? What kind of thinking of a government is that? We are being taken 
on the reserve here because we do not have a solid government. What excites him is that petty thing he was doing in Pumalanga. He says he's closing a port hole and he's fascinated by closing a port hole on a gravel road. What logic is that? That is what we are dealing with. We have to save ourselves, South Africa, from this nonsense. We have to save ourselves. We have to save ourselves from this rubbish. What is happening in this country is a man-made crisis. That is why when we go on the 20th of March 2023, we must be saying Puma Ramaphosa Puma. Puma Ramaphosa Puma. Buya electricity, buya. Amanda. Thank you very much.